In this video, we're talking about the difference quotient versus the definition of the derivative. We want to talk about the differences between the two. In this particular problem, we've been asked to use the definition of the derivative as opposed to the difference quotient. We've been asked to use the definition of the derivative to find the derivative of the function y equals 4x minus x squared at the point 1, 3. So what I want to do is distinguish between the difference quotient and the definition of the derivative. They look very similar to each other, but they're actually two different things. So the difference quotient is what I have here on the left-hand side. The difference quotient is the slope of the secant line. It's also average rate of change, or we can just call it the difference quotient. And basically, it's this equation right here, f of x sub 2 minus f of x sub 1 divided by x sub 2 minus x sub 1. And basically, it's just we have two different points, and we want to find the slope between them when those points are separated. So for example, if we had a curve, let's draw an xy coordinate system here. So we have axes, and we'll call them x and y, like this, and we have some curve, and it doesn't matter what the curve looks like. Let's pretend that the curve looks like this. So we have this curve. And if we call this value right here x sub 1, and we call this value right here x sub 2, then this point right here is f of x sub 1, and this point right here is f of x sub 2, assuming that this function here is the function f of x. Now if we want to find the slope of the line that connects these two points, so let's go ahead and connect these two points here with the line, so this line right here. If we want to find the slope of the line that intersects both of those points, f of x sub 1 and f of x sub 2, then we just use the difference quotient, and we take f of x sub 2, this value right here, and we subtract f of x sub 1, this value here, and we divide that by x sub 2 minus x sub 1. And really, when you think about it, that's just the change in y over the change in x, or delta y over delta x. So that's the difference quotient, and it's the slope of the secant line, because remember the secant line is a line that intersects the curve at two points. So it cuts across the curve at two different points. And we could also say that it's the average rate of change of the function over the interval x sub 1 to x sub 2. Now remember that as the distance between x sub 1 and x sub 2 decreases, in other words, as we move x sub 2, closer and closer to x sub 1, these points here are going to get closer and closer to one another, so this point is going to draw in toward this point f of x sub 1. The derivative of the function at x sub 1 is what we get when we reduce this distance between the two points to 0, and we create a tangent line, a line that only intersects the curve at just this singular point instead of intersecting the curve at two points. So that's the definition of the derivative. We reduce this distance all the way down to 0, and we call that the definition of the derivative. We can also call it the slope of the tangent line because the secant line becomes the tangent line. And we can also call it the instantaneous rate of change, how fast the function is changing exactly at that instant, exactly at x sub 1, instead of how fast it changes on average over the interval x sub 1 to x sub 2. So slope of the tangent line, instantaneous rate of change, and the definition of the derivative are all the same thing. And the notation looks like this. And the biggest thing to look for is this limit notation here. Notice that this quotient here, this f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a, looks extremely similar to this f of x sub 2 minus f of x sub 1 divided by x sub 2 minus x sub 1. They're almost identical, and in fact, really all we've done is we've replaced x sub 1 with a, and x sub 2 we've just called x. So really, if we said instead down here, if we said that x sub 2 was going to be x and that x sub 1 was going to be a, we're saying that we're taking the limit as x goes to a. So as x gets really, really close to a, and we find the value here of this quotient. So it's the same thing as before, except that we're saying that the distance between x sub 1 and x sub 2, or in this case, the distance between a and x, is eventually going to go down to 0. For that reason, you'll also see it written this way, where we define the distance between these two points as h. So we define this distance right here between the two x values as h, and we take the limit as h goes to 0. In other words, we want to find the value of this quotient as that distance h goes to 0. The distance decreases eventually to 0, and these points end up on top of each other. 
that's when we get the tangent line, that's when we get the definition of the derivative. So that's how these two things are different. In this particular problem, we've been asked to use the definition of the derivative to find the derivative of this function at the particular point. So we can use either of these formulas, the limit as x goes to a of this quotient, or the limit as h goes to zero of this quotient. Let's go ahead and do both so you can see how both formulas are always gonna give us the same result. So if we use this here, the limit as x goes to a, a is the value of x that we're interested in, and we're interested in the point 1, 3. The value of x there is 1. So we're going to take the limit as x goes to 1 of f of x. f of x is our original function, so we're going to say 4x minus x squared minus f of a. Well, that's where we just plug a, which is 1, into our function because a is 1, so this is f of 1. So we plug 1 into our function here, so we're going to say minus 4 times 1 minus 1 squared when we plug 1 into our original function. Then we're going to divide that by x minus a or x minus 1. Now if we simplify here we get the limit as x goes to 1 of 4x minus x squared. 4 times 1 is 1 so we get minus 4. 1 squared is 1. We have a negative 1 but we apply this negative sign and we end up with a positive 1 divided by x minus 1. That'll give us the limit as x approaches 1 of negative x squared, we're going to reorder our terms here in the numerator, negative x squared plus 4x minus 4 plus 1 is going to be a minus 3 divided by x minus 1. If we factor out a negative sign, we're going to get the limit as x approaches 1. We're going to factor a negative out of the numerator, so negative x squared minus 4x plus 3 all divided by x minus 1. Now we can factor x squared minus 4x plus 3 as x minus 3 times x minus 1. So we'll get the limit as x goes to 1, negative, and then here, x minus 3 times x minus 1, like this, all divided by x minus 1. Now you can see we'll get x minus 1 and x minus 1 to cancel. We'll end up with the limit as x approaches 1 of negative x minus 1. 3, which is going to be the same as the limit as x approaches 1 of positive 3 minus x. We'll use substitution and plug 1 in for x. We'll get 3 minus 1. That's going to give us 2. So the derivative of this function at the point is 2. The slope of the tangent line at that point, therefore, is also 2. And the instantaneous rate of change, therefore, is also 2. Now remember we could also use this notation where we have the limit as h goes to 0. In that case, a is still 1 because the value of x that we're interested in is this value right here, 1. So a is going to be 1 and we'll leave h in our formula. So what we'll end up with is the limit as h goes to 0 of f of 1 plus h. Well what we want to do is plug 1 plus h in for x to our original function here. So we're going to say instead of 4x we're going to say 4 times 1 plus h and then instead of minus x squared we're going to say minus 1 plus h quantity squared. Then we're going to say minus f of a. Well remember a is 1 so we're saying minus f of 1 and f of 1 is whatever we get when we plug 1 into this equation here. So we're going to say minus 4 times 1 minus 1 squared. Now that's everything in our numerator. We just want to divide that by a denominator of h. Now we simplify this. We can say the limit as h approaches 0. 4 times 1 plus h, we distribute that 4 and we get 4 plus 4h. Then we'll say minus 1 plus h quantity squared. So minus 1 plus h times 1 plus h gives us 1 plus 2h plus h squared. Then we'll distribute this negative sign and we'll have minus 4 plus 1 all divided by h. If we continue simplifying, we'll have the limit as h approaches 0. We'll get 4 plus 4h minus 1 minus 2h minus h squared when we distribute this negative sign across all the terms inside the parentheses. Minus 4 plus 1 all divided by h. So we'll have the limit as h approaches 0. Here we'll get 4 minus 4. We'll have negative 1 plus 1. Those will all cancel. We'll be left with 4h minus 2h minus h squared all divided by h. 
4h minus 2h is just a positive 2h, so we'll say positive 2h minus h squared divided by h. When we factor an h out of the numerator, we'll say the limit as h goes to 0 of h times 2 minus h all divided by h, and then we can cancel an h from the numerator and denominator. So now we have the limit as h approaches 0 of 2 minus h. When we plug 0 in for h using substitution, we get 2 minus 0, or just 2. And so now what we can say then is that using this notation, the limit as x goes to a of f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a, gave us a derivative of 2 for this function at the point 1, 3. Using this notation, the limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a all divided by h gave us a derivative of 2 of this function at the point 1, 3. So you can see that no matter which formula we use, we're going to get the appropriate value for the derivative, and we can say that the derivative is 2, the slope of the tangent line is 2, instantaneous rate of change is 2. Then, just as a bonus, once you've used the definition of the derivative to find the derivative of a function at a point, and you know the derivative there, since this is the slope of the tangent line, if you want to find an equation for the tangent line, you just use the formula y minus y sub 1 is equal to m times x minus x sub 1. This is the point slope form for the equation of a line. We already found the slope of the tangent line, that was 2, so we can plug 2 in for m. We know that we're interested in the point 1, 3, so we plug 1 in for x sub 1 and 3 in for y sub 1, and we get y minus 3 equals 2, the slope that we found, or the derivative, times x minus x sub 1, which is 1. And then we can just simplify that and say y minus 3 equals 2x minus 2, add 3 to both sides, and get y equals 2x plus 1, and this is the equation of the tangent line. So that's how we use the definition of the derivative to find the derivative of a function at a point. The derivative at a particular point is also the slope of the tangent line at that point, and the instantaneous rate of change at that point, and we can use that derivative as the slope of the tangent line in the formula for the equation of a line to find the equation of the tangent line to this function at the particular point.